Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freud. So that must make this the next page. Hello, Marissa. Hi, how's it going? It's going swimmingly. Oh, swimmingly. Swimmingly. How's that? Very good. That's just what I thought of after because I've had a rough week. Mm Mm-hmm. Because we're doing this on a Friday, which we're getting into a habit of doing this late in the week. (laughs) Late in the week and later in the evening. This isn't Mm -hmm. our latest, though, but it's pretty dark already. It is. And you know how that makes me feel. I know. So, but yeah, I'm doing, I'm going, I'm doing swimmingly. I, I don't know where I got that from, but I'm making it through. Good. So, how was your weekend? My last weekend was so nice. I think I shared that I was... You did. That's why I asked. Going out of town um, without my family, which I love my family, but it was my, you know, in my little me time getaway with one of my best friends from high school who I don't see very often because she lives in Connecticut and we had the best time. So I'm feeling Good. refreshed and rejuvenated. And that's awesome. Already looking forward to doing it again. <laughs> Good. Well, that, you know, those are things that you need to do because you need mm-hmm. those, those times of refreshing. Mm-hmm. So today's post is kind of weird, I guess. So the, the title of it was Teaching Moments and Touch Points. And what were you thinking when you first saw that? I, I, had, I wasn't sure. Um, I was definitely intrigued. I thought maybe it had something to do with a class that you were teaching or about to teach. But I was yeah. pleasantly surprised by where your inspiration came from. Yeah, so my inspiration was interesting. Um, Last November, I was in West Palm um, at a a training, and there were probably 30 of us in a room. And and while I was at this training, John Maxwell came in and and, and he he said, hey, I'm I'm raising money for Equip, one of my charities. And he said, I'm I'm, going to offer this to you guys first, and I'm taking a very small group of people and we're going to do a pheasant hunt and there was i forgot where somewhere in the in the midwest there was this special ranch where you can go and and to make a long story short there were about six guys that paid to go and it was a significant amount of money but it was all for charity um and there was i had the privilege of listening into a a call that they actually posted as a podcast of these six guys just sitting down with John for 30 minutes talking he would he asked each of them tell me what one of your takeaways was and all of a sudden i I became really envious that i didn't make the trip (laughs) but i also knew that there was no way i was going to be able to afford to 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 make that kind of a donation but one of the points that john made was he said because he was following up on what somebody else said and he said we need to realize that every day is filled with teaching moments and touch points and he said, great leaders look for those teaching moments and touch points. And, and where my, my mind went first was, you know, my son Mike is 36. I get that age. Yeah, he's 36. And Mike is having, he just, he's had a, he just had a birthday. By the time this airs, he will just had a birthday. Um, and so I calculated days of missed opportunity. So I'm having over 13,000 days that he's been alive. How many, and now I didn't get into, if I was a C behavior profile, I would be able to look at how many leap years there were. And now I just took a (laughs) roundabout. Okay. But did I make the most of those moments? Did I make the most of those times when, you know, whatever it could have been was a teaching moment. And did I share that with him? Um, so I think, you know, you could probably relate to this as a mother. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we have our children for such a short period of time under our roof, so to speak. Um, but even after they move out, you know, when, when, when I have conversations with my kids and they talk about something, am I looking for teaching moments? Um, am I looking for the opportunity to help them see something in a different perspective? And the reason why I used that example in my post was I think as leaders, everybody can relate to that as a parent. So let me ask you this. And and this is where I ask you questions I didn't tell you I was going to ask you. So thinking of Isla, what kind of teaching moments can you think think of that you've had this week? 
<laughs> it's so funny you ask that because this week we talked about uh so Isla is very good at um defining mistakes now. Mm-hmm. And it's great because she defines when she has made a mistake or you know, mommy, you made a mistake. And it's often like silly things, but um this week I found myself in a position where I had to apologize to her for something. And it was a really good opportunity to talk about apologizing and Absolutely. and saying that, you know, mommy made a mistake and I'm sorry that I upset you. And and I asked her, I said, how, how can I, you know, fix this? And she didn't quite understand that part, um, mm-hmm. but she just gave me a big hug and she said, I love you, mommy. And, oh, wow. and the day just carried on. And so yep. while I'm not sure she completely understood what was going on, it was one of those moments where I was like, okay, like, I'm pretty sure this is what I was supposed to do. It didn't do any harm. So like, mm-hmm. we'll just keep doing this. Yep. <laughs> but she's at that age now where I think it's important. She goes to school part time and um, we've talked about, you know, how to uh, handle situations with friends at school. And I thought, you know, we should be modeling this at home. And it's not just when she makes a mistake, but when... I make a mistake or when my husband sure. makes a mistake as well. That is that is such a great example because that's something that I think leaders miss. Mm-hmm. You know, we all make mistakes. Every leader makes mistakes. Every person makes mistakes. But as leaders, are we willing to apologize mm-hmm. when we make mistakes? Um, I, you know, I remember my parents apologizing when they made mistakes. And mm-hmm. it just, it hit me. It, it hit me like, like, whoa, what just happened here? Right. They they leveraged the teaching moment. Mm-hmm. That's what they did. And we and so we'll have times when we're short with people. We'll have times when we're when we didn't react the way we should. Um we'll have times when we missed something. Just apologize. It's mm-hmm. a teaching moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, um the other things that I was thinking about with, with with teaching moments were, you know, um failures, not our failures, but somebody else's failure and then we can help our team work their way through that uh i i think there's other amazing teaching moments when with with news that can come out you know for instance i i remember back in what was it 2007 2008 when when we had the we went into what they call i guess the great recession Mm -hmm. you know and there were there were all kinds of new things that we were faced with and anything new is an opportunity to teach something new. And, and I remember when I, when I had to, uh, we were slowing down so much that I went from, we did work share. So we went from five days a week to four days a week to three days a week. And then I realized that the people that I needed the most, because we were at that time, we decided to look into a different product line type of thing. We were going to embrace some new technologies that were very, very difficult. But I needed my best, highest skilled people there five days a week, or we wouldn't have been able to turn it around. So when we came back from the Christmas break, I had to lay off people because I said to our owner, I need the right people here five days a week to be able to make this transition work. And But the problem was we had a philosophy, I think since I had gotten to Selflux, so at that point it probably would have been 10 years, we never had a layoff ever. Mm-hmm. And it was just something we don't do. We would paint machines. We would paint the building. But it gave me an opportunity to have a teaching moment where I had to say, you know, listen, it's not that we don't value the people, but because the company needs to survive, we have to create a, a different understanding of, of what you do in a crisis. And I just, I shared things with people. I talked with people uh, because all of us were were hurt by what was happening. But I just used them as opportunities to to teach some some different ways of viewing things. Painful. Now, the nice part was most of the people, every all but three people came back. One of them had a job, and two of them, you know, were people that we just didn't have a place for to call back, unfortunately. Uh, but the company turned around nicely, and people were only out like six weeks, which which wasn't too bad. Some companies closed. But then I was able to say, you see why we were able to stay in business was because we made these difficult decisions And we embraced a new technology. So when you're faced with a struggle, you look for what you can learn from it. Teaching moments. So that's the teaching moment part. Mm -hmm. Um, It's tough. It hurts sometimes. 
but they're all around us. I, I think if, we, if we're honest, every day there's multiple teaching moments. We just got to look for them. And, and there was, this was interesting because this was something that I had shared with you before we started recording. That Even if you go back into the Old Testament in the Bible, in the, the book of Deuteronomy, which is um, part of the Torah, there's a verse that talks about parenting. And it says, you know, you're basically teaching your kids when you're walking, when you're, when you're sitting in your house, when you're getting up, when you're walking, by the way, when you're lying down, when you're getting, anytime you're, it basically is saying, anytime as you go through life, you can teach people things. Mm-hmm. The question is, are we teaching? So touch points. Let's talk about touch points. What was your first thought when you saw the part about touch points? I just thought about connection, like human connection and connecting with people, whether it be in the community, at work, at home. And I think it's something that is often missed these days because we're yes. so connected to other things. You know, we have our smartphones or, you know, the smart watches, the Apple watch. Um, we're so distracted by those things that it's yep. even more difficult than ever to have that human connection. Exactly. It was interesting uh, as I'm, as I'm was listening to you um, during dinner, engineer Tim was sharing with uh, my wife and I that something from, so there's this, this sports radio show called the Dan Patrick show. And, and I don't even know if this was a current episode, but it was something he saw where they were talking about the people that, um, I think they might've even referred to it as minimal kindness or something like that, where <laughs> they'll, they'll see and they say, Hey, how you doing? How's the family? But they didn't care. Right. They just kept walking. Mm-hmm. That happens all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if something's, if you're, we need to know what's happening in the lives of the people that we're around. And the only way we can do that is to ask them. So if we see every day when you say, hey, how are you? Or good morning, you need to mean it. Right. That's a connection point. Because we live in a world that just says, hey, how are you? And they're gone. No, can't, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Find those moments where you can really make that connection. Uh, one of the things, one of the reasons is... Um, that's what makes people feel valued. I'm not a number if my leader actually stopped to say, hey, how was your weekend? And they remembered that, for instance, you were going on a 30-some hour getaway with your friend from high school. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. it wasn't a full weekend. It was a 30-some hour, right? No, it was 30-something hours, but we really packed it in. There's a, a okay. lot of connection good. going on there. but Okay, good. Yeah. But you know, think about if somebody would have, if you would have been working for somebody and they would have remembered that mm-hmm. and said, Hey, how was it? Did you see any, any nice restaurants or did you go to any nice restaurants? They took an interest in you and they remembered what you said. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I tell all of my, the students in my supervisory leadership class, you talked about, you know, the smartphone, the smartwatch, all of those things have note apps mm-hmm. and you better have a note for every one of your direct reports. Not what did they do wrong, but, you know, their family. How many kids do they have? The ages of their kids. Maybe their work anniversary. Maybe their birthday. Whatever, any information Mm -hmm. you can get, put it in there so that you have these moments to have touch points. That's how people feel valued. Yep. And it's critical. Mm -hmm. Can you think of um, when you were in school, who was your favorite teacher? It, I can still remember a favorite teacher from elementary school. Um, she was my second grade teacher, and I only had her for half the year because she was on maternity leave for half the year. Um, okay. But I think, I think I probably have a favorite teacher from every school building that I was in. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the second grade teacher that you mm-hmm. had for only half a year, why was she your favorite teacher? Because I felt like she connected with right. with all of us students, and she treated us all individually. We weren't yep. just a you know we weren't just the class. Like I right. was Marissa, and we had you know, everyone was. She met everyone where yep. they were at, and um, was very personable. And it wasn't just you know my way or the highway. She, she was yep. just a fantastic teacher. Yep. 
I've asked that. So I typically ask that question when I teach the class, everyone communicates few connect. Mm -hmm. And I will, and I've actually had people say to me, my favorite teacher was Mr. So-and-so. And and it was a class that I struggled in Mm -hmm. where they said, I wasn't good in that class, but he went out of his way. She went out of her way to connect with me. And what I try to do is I draw out of them. Why are they saying this? Why would they be saying this? Because they need to see what that connection felt like. Mm -hmm. So all of us had favorite teachers, favorite coaches, you know, whoever it might be. And these were the people that when we were going through, you know, our, our, our developing years, if I can call it that, you know, our, our adolescent years, our teen years, these were the people that reached out to us and connected with us. Why aren't we doing that at work? I think we often forget, you know, like that, that is a feeling and that that is something that can happen. Like, I think I've shared on here before that I went to a conference that was in North Carolina and it was, um, I think I was gone for three nights. It was two full days. And for the duration of the sessions, which were pretty much from about 830 in the morning to 430 in the afternoon, cell phones were not allowed. There was actually several boxes when you got there that there were people collecting phones and wow there was one there was um you know a designated person that worked for the organization putting on the conference that gave everyone her phone number ahead of time and said give this to your loved ones in case of an emergency and i will be outside the conference room um with the phone the entire time Wow. And so, you know, you give it to your babysitter, give it to your spouse, give it to your parents, whatever. And if there's an emergency, they will call me. Otherwise, you don't, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't need your phone. And so I essentially spent two days without my phone and was able to connect with so many people who I'd never met before. And I was amazed at how different I felt mentally without that with with human connection instead of like digital connection. Sure. We're tethered. Sure. We're tethered to our devices and, and I am just as guilty as everyone else. Um yeah. but we're so reliant on them for so many things. Like, sure. oh, I'm just gonna check the weather. I'm gonna yeah. use my and then it's like, oh, while I'm here, I'm just gonna check my email. I'm just gonna check my work email and my personal email. Yeah. And oh, Instagram, I have a notification and I'm going to um, I don't like my background photo, so I'm going to change it. And, oh, I should send that cute video to my grandma because she'll think it's great. And before you know it, you've you've had your head down and you've missed so many opportunities to connect with right. your, the people right. that you're around. Right. And this is great because we're recording a podcast that people are going to listen to on their smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, but you're right. Right. I mean, it's balance. Um, I mean, yes. like going back to that the weekend, my 30, was it maybe like 32 hour time away? Um, I spent three hours and 20 minutes driving there and three hours and 20 minutes driving back. And, Mm -hmm. um, while I, while I couldn't, (laughs) sorry, there's having some touch moments. (laughs) Somebody wants to connect with me. (laughs) It's Um, all right. Love it. So while I couldn't, you spend those three hours and 20, I was alone in the car, but I was able to read an entire, or listen to an entire book without yep. much other distraction. Um, sure, sure. And same thing for a podcast, so. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. But the, but this, but, but the point is, you're, you're absolutely right. We are tethered to technology so that we don't think we need the human interaction. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, and, and so I think, I think Simon Sinek in his book, Leaders Eat Last, basically says that our technology has hijacked our dopamine you know and it's just we we need the alerts we need no what we need are people in our lives and people need us yeah you know there's so many people that need us are we taking the time to be there for them and and it's not it doesn't have to just be work related one of one of the things i learned when I had the privilege, and it really was, it was a privilege of working in the same company where my dad was the the plant manager or VP of manufacturing engineering. I forgot what his title was. Um, but I can't tell you how many times I would walk by his office and he was having, you know, a personal conversation with somebody that was struggling with something. You know, um, 
people would come in and say, you know, Bob, can I talk to you? Can you pray for me? Can you? And his door was always open for those kinds of meetings. Mm -hmm. And he, I think that he felt that really was his job. But the interesting thing was, and so people say, well, that's just not my behavior profile. My dad's a high D. I didn't believe it till I saw his assessment, mm -hmm. but he was a high D. But he understood that people were the most important thing for him to be successful as a leader in a company. You know, and, and so here we go. Oh, it just hit me. This was like an epiphany a moment, so to speak. That's probably not a good express uh, description. But we're getting close to that most wonderful time of the year. It's getting dark, remember? <laughs> so remember that phrase in, in uh, It's a Christmas Carol where Scrooge has to say, you know, mankind was my business, but he missed it. Mm -hmm. It might not be Scrooge. It might be Marley that said that. Yeah, Mar Marley said, mankind was my business, but I missed it. So let's not miss it. Right. Let's realize that, that the people that are working with us are not human doings, they're human beings. And, and we just have to find those touch points and teaching moments because that's what's going to elevate our team. That's what's going to bind them to the organization. They will, I, I did a, was doing some follow-up on a 360 today, and I, I loved it when I was able to say to um, an engineering manager, you know, your people want to work for you. Mm -hmm. It's not that they have to. They want to. And when you can, you, and the only way you get that is by leveraging teaching moments and touch points. And they're all around us. Yes, they so are. So how, from your perspective, how could a person become more sensitive to touch points? Because uh, I'm looking at it from the point of an old man, a 58-year-old <laughs> guy, so. I mean, I can't imagine that our... Our perspectives are very different here. Um, you know, in the workplace, I think it's important to, if someone comes into your office, like turn away from your computer. Yes. And we're also glued to the screens, like actually, you know, swivel your desk chair around so that you're focused on the person and actively listening. Um, yep. That also Perfect. might mean saying like, hey, Let's connect later. You know, I'm, I'm yes. expecting, you know, if you know you're expecting a phone call in three minutes right. and it, you don't want to rush that person along, but say, hey, I'm expecting this phone call at nine. I'm free at 10. Can we talk then? Because I really want right. to hear what you have to say. Um, right. I think that in our personal lives, again, just like being fully present, putting away the distractions. Um, you know, when I was with my friend, I knew that this was, this was kind of like our one time of year that we would really be just the two of us. All of our other interactions yep. are like, you know, she's home for Thanksgiving for 48 hours and I scurry over to her parents' house, but we're not, right. you know, we're not really able to discuss her upcoming wedding or things like that because everyone wants to know how the girls are and how, how work is sure. and all that kind of stuff. And so a telltale sign for me was that like, by the time the end of our first day, when we, when I got in bed, I still had something like 65% of my phone battery. Oh, there's a good sign <laughs> for us. It yeah. Is like, okay. Like, whereas I bet oftentimes I go to bed and I'm on like low power mode. Yep. Um, with, you know, back to the work environment, if you have like a staff meeting, um, be fully present. Right. You know, it's painful as it might feel to sit for an hour or however long it may be. Um, use that as an opportunity to really get to understand the roles of the people around you. Mm -hmm. And and if you can't connect at those types of things, use them as a learning, a teaching moment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, as an yes. opportunity to yep. to learn something. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's it. So, yeah, we aren't that different from one another. No. Even though I'm much 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 older but it's true it's just it's being aware it's being fully mm -hmm. present it's it's watching how people are are reacting and listening mm -hmm. to people and when you do you're gonna find the teaching moments and touch points yeah good hey any plans for this weekend i mean you, you can't go away every weekend but, no well, i guess you could but derek might get upset <laughs> no I, you know i think we're gonna 
check off some more things from our bucket list. Um, Great. I'm not sure what yet, but we are moving right along with that. And we are going to um, a birthday party. Super. Yeah. How about well, you? I, I, we are having guests for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Lots of guests. For the weekend. <laughs> so house full. That'll be but fun. it's going to be good. Mm-hmm. It, it's all good. Uh, you know, good friends are what make the world go round. Mm-hmm. So looking forward. So you're going to want, you want to know what we're going to talk about next week. Sure do. I have no idea. <laughs> How's that? Well, we'll see when inspiration strikes. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably. Well, you know, I did say I told you earlier that when I was listening to this call that was about thirty minutes long, I came up with ten takeaways. Mm-hmm. So that means that meant you know every three minutes I was getting one. So I could probably just look at that list and come up mm-hmm. with something. Right, we but still I will have nine get more. <laughs> I still got nine more. Yeah. So I will get that to you as quick as I can, so you're not surprised come next week. Sounds good. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was the next page.